All right, boys and girls, what is going on out there today? This is Brent Abel here, webtennis.com. Another episode of 7 Around 7. We've got a couple special guests today, one that you've seen before. Um, the, the dealer of reality tennis, the great Jeff Jaffis. Jeffrey, good morning. What's going on there, man? Just a beautiful kind of a balmy day this morning here in Modesto. We got a little, uh, little, yeah, just a little, little bit of cloud cover, so it kind of keeps gets a little, you know, okay, a little humid, a little humidity this morning, you know, because it's going to be warm. So all right, good, good. Well, and that young man there in the middle, the good-looking guy that Jeff is making us look good just by association, <laughs> um, super student, student extraordinaire, Rich Cranks from Alameda, California. Rich, good morning. What's going good morning, on? Everybody. Good morning. Hi, guys. Well, listen, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us, Rich. And guys, look, what we're going to do today is something um, something different, but I think you're going to get a lot of value out of it. Um, we're going to start with some, as Jeff calls it, some softball. We're going to lob some softball questions at Rich to make it, you know, all kind of ooey gooey in the beginning. I mean, it is a California thing out there, right? So, and then we're going to come in and maybe dig a little bit and see if we can't make the hot seat a little bit warmer. Um, so Jeff, I'm going to let you start off. I mean, or maybe what we'll do is, is we'll go with Rich first. Rich, um, you know, the the chronological order, I think, in terms of, you know, my relationship with you and then Jeff's relationship with you is, I think, was it, were you a, a web tennis subscriber first before we played that tournament in Berkeley at the, at the uh, Pacific Coast? Uh, I actually was. Um, and then, um, you yeah. know, and then you unsubscribed after we played. <laughs> no, actually, actually, it was actually before that, Brent. We actually played a, a doubles match. You were playing with Jim Gay. That's right. That's right. Uh, at the Harbor Bay Club, and you were that. you were representing uh, BTC, and I was That's playing right. at the Harbor Bay Club with another partner, yeah. and we were playing a USTA doubles match. That's right. That's right. And I had already, you know, seen you on on uh, online, and there you were in person. Yeah, that's right. No, no, yeah. that's right. And, yeah, and we uh, talked about that and baseball and all that. That's right. Exactly. And then um, we played a singles match, Berkeley, and then, yeah, um, and then when Jeff and I got going with go ball hunting, I think that was when you guys got um, got together and started um, and started your coaching thing together there. So look. Rich, bring us up to speed a little bit. You know, give us the – I'm going to cut it off in 45 seconds, but give us the 45-second uh, kind of backstory of where you are or where you were and where you are now as, uh, you know, a super competitive senior player playing both leagues and 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 traveling and playing some tournaments. Yeah, um, I, uh, you know, picked up the, the game pretty late. Uh, I was a football and a baseball player back in uh, Pennsylvania. We didn't play much tennis in those days. Um, but uh, when I moved to California, I said, well, I better pick up this racket and start playing. And, and really enjoyed the game, grabbed onto it. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was basically, I don't know that I still know, but I know a little bit more thanks to Jeff. But I would tell you that um, basically I would tell people when I competed, you know, I'm an athlete playing tennis. You know, you guys are tennis players playing tennis. And and it really showed because I'm out there running around. And I was pretty fast in the day. And um, – you know, I would hit a ball and that guy would be right there where I hit it. Like, how does he know that? And, and I, <laughs> I could never figure that out. I, I had no clue. Or there's this big, wide open space to hit it to. And then I hit it wide every time. So um, that was that was me in a nutshell. You know, pretty good athlete. Uh, kind of knew some strokes. Um, I took some lessons to, to learn strokes uh, because, you know, I didn't I, you know, I knew how to swing a baseball bat or catch a football. And that was the funny thing about it. As a wide receiver, you're always taught to get behind the ball. As a baseball player, get behind the ball. In tennis, get away from the ball. So that was that was a very hard transition right. for me. Yeah. And then, um, so I, you know, I progressed through and, and and worked hard at it and uh, got a little bit better. But I still wasn't anywhere near where I was hoping to be. Um, I watched a lot of What's the Right Shot. Um, those were those are great episodes, and then it got I kind of got hooked on gold ball hunting. Um, the banter was was great. You guys uh, really fed <laughs> off of each other. It was great information. And um, and one day you said, um, "Yeah, you know Jeff's going to be in Northern California, and uh, you know if you want to hit with him, look him up." And I got the number, and I did, and I was like, 
Yeah, this is great. And we went out and um, we hit for an hour, right, Jeff? I think the first yeah. time. And yeah, I, well, I think I think I think we went for a couple hours because the first, well, the first half hour to forty five minutes, we were really just chatting. You know, I was just yeah. trying to like, okay, who is this guy? Where is he coming from? What's his What's his uh, You know, wh where do you think you're headed? What do you What What do you think uh, is Is where you want to go? And and kind of a reality check a little bit for me to kind of see what uh, What kind of clay I'm working with? You, yeah, Jeff, why don't you kind of describe? when you first got together with rich and kind of what that, what that timeline has been like, kind of what that journey has been like from, and you know, you can be brutally honest. He's a big boy. He can take it. Um, <laughs> fact, you probably I'm leaving in a minute. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> so, um, so kind of get, can yeah. you, I mean, just kind of give us a story in terms of, of your perspective as a coach, yeah, not as a club teaching pro, right? I mean, but no, 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 no. As a, as no, no, club, club teaching pro, you don't always have the opportunity and or time to sit down with somebody first. Um, and and so this, you know, the this part of my career, you know, when uh, the first session all the time now is a two hour session because the first half hour to 45 minutes, maybe an hour, we're, we're just sitting chatting in the shade, uh, you know, with, with our water. And I'm just trying to dig in there and find out you know, who this person is, their tennis history, their lesson history, their coaching history, what, you know, kind of like how they view, what kind of lens are they looking through and how do they see the game? And then, um, and then kind of like, what, 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 what do you got in mind here? Like, wh where do you hope to be? What's your goal is, you know, do you want to hit your forehand like Roger Federer? Cause you know, we're going to have harsh reality check right yeah. now, you know, it's kind of getting kind of, you know, kind of get into the, in, into it, you know, where, where, you know, and part of it too is I'm, I'm trying to build a rapport with this person too, as quickly as I can to, to find out, like, do they really understand what they're asking for? Cause that, that's a, that's a big reality check in the process too, is that, you, you know, um, un, unlike, um, you know, every, you know, clickbait video on, you know, YouTube that, yeah, hit your return to serve like Djokovic in three easy steps. Okay. Is it, what do you, what do you think in here? You know? And, and then, you know, I like to be, you know, politely, brutally honest and say, okay, this, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at some time frames here. This is, this is going to be mind numbing repetition in some aspects. Uh, there are things that, you won't learn until six months from now because you can't see it doing what you're doing right now. And, and until we actually lay the groundwork, there's going to be a day when all of a sudden you, you go, oh, why didn't you tell me that on the first day? <laughs> and I'm going to go because it, it just wouldn't have made any kind of sense whatsoever. So, you know, I try to let the, 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 the student know that th th this is a journey. And I'm in it with you. And I think about this stuff when I'm in my car, you know, driving and I'm in the car for an hour or whatever, or at night and I wake up and I make a quick little note, you know, it's not, it's not a big notebook, but I'm, I'm always, you know, tinkering in my head, how to move this person along the path. But that's kind of, you know, briefly the, the, the front end of it is a sit down discussion and, you know, where, where would you like to steer this journey? And, and then, whether I think I can help him get there or not, you know? Okay. Well, he must have, I mean, Rich must have conveyed to you, I, I'm sure with some real clarity that just like he said, here's where I'm at. I, I know I can be better than this in this game. I just don't understand the game. I'm a decent, decent, if not pretty good athlete. And, yeah. and so I want your help to teach me how to play the game of tennis so that I can compete and, and start to win more. So, what have you guys done? I mean, what, what's it been a year and a half? Has it been a couple of years, Jeff? Um, that, um, and I'm, I'm looking more for kind of the reality of what he was yeah. like then, let's say a year and a half ago when you guys started and where he's at now, what's kind of, you know, let's call it the before and after. Um, well, in, initially, and again, you know, um, at this stage when someone, you know, comes and, and asks, you know, um, I'm not dealing with a beginner. I'm not dealing with somebody that doesn't have strokes of some sort. And so first, initially, most of the time, 
Um, we have to do a little tweaking, a little cleanup um, in that regard in terms of process, um, the, the uh, you know, framework, the turn, some basic things so that that can become consistent. And then, and then in that, then from there, in that process, we start to gently introduce pattern work and and how how you construct a point. And that that was, I think, the one of the bigger mind blowing parts for Rich. And he can, you know, he can expand on that, you know, in that process. So, so when you first went out there the first couple of times with, with Rich, as you said, kind of cleaning up, said some technique. Specifically, what were the things that that you had to help him with? Um, specifically the cleanup of what a good ready position looks like and that that's, that's like ground zero after you hit every ball. And, and, and then we're, we're kind of still, we still come back to that every so often, um, to, to do maintenance work on that, to make sure it's not only maintaining, but can we even make it a little better, you know, and it does get better as rich becomes much more aware of how it affects everything else. And, and that's one of those things that it doesn't happen on day one. That's just a slow progression of, of getting through it. So, you know, a good ready position, the, the, the framework turn, maintaining that turn on the way to the ball. So, so his spacing becomes very accurate and, and where his spacing is now compared to a year and a half ago are light years apart. The consistency of his move into the ball is light years ahead of where he was a year and a half ago. Um, and so then when that, when that starts to happen, when I see that, okay, he, the, first the, the guy gets it. Rich is starting to have clarity about doing that consistently because he's seeing how it affects his ability to hit four, five, six, seven, eight balls, quality balls in a row. Now, okay, now we can, I can I'm going to start teaching you now how to construct a point with this tool. Right. With 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 what's in your in your toolbox, let's pick out the right tools now. And, and I'm going to show you now how to start constructing points. And that was another revelatory uh, experience in that journey, too. But, I, you know, Rich, you, you can, you know, expand on that front end of that for sure. Yeah, uh, I agree 100 percent. I mean, I think uh, probably one of my biggest um, problems was that I'd hit a shot and I'd be like a spectator in the first row. Wow, that was a great shot. Oh, it's coming back. And um, uh, yeah, well, well, now what? So, um, uh, and Jeff and I really worked on that a lot. And, and um, it's every shot. It's every point. It's uh, the concentration, the footwork, um, the framework that that I use. And, you know, different cues work for me. But uh, yeah, we really worked on that a lot. And I know that sounds like, you know, very beginner stuff, but um, it makes it makes such a huge difference because when I go out and play my matches, a lot of that now is ingrained where I don't think about it. I just do it. And then that's the key thing. And I think we work on that repetition a lot on that. And he'll pick it out right away. Rich, okay, let's stop. And we'll go back to now. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't you be in a better position if you do this? <laughs> right. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, let's go back and do that. So, yeah. Well, that, so that's, so that's Rich, true. what would you say since you started working with Jeff, I'm assuming that your kind of your average weekly practice schedule, match schedule, all that has probably changed somewhat just because Jeff's got you focusing on 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 different things than than, than before. So what's uh, you know, what's your typical week like in terms of I know that you're seeing Jeff at least once a week, um, but kind of describe what what that week looks like well it depends on how my right knee feels so <laughs> as, <laughs> as we age i think there's all certain parts of our body that says not today <laughs> okay. well let's say it's not barking at you What's, right right yeah. yeah so so in general um and we'll start with jeff well, let's let's start with thursday because i'm there with thursday an hour and a half which is awesome and, and i look forward to it so much every week um when we can get together i usually try and set up a match on friday and Saturday. And so, because then I can easily take what we worked on and take it into real match play and not just practice. I, I want to take it into match play and kind of focus on one thing or two things that, you know, kind of we, we picked on that day. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe take a break Sunday, Monday, I'm probably on the ball machine 
either at Harbor Bay Club or Berkeley Tennis Club Tuesday. I'll probably try and get a practice partner and we'll go out and we'll do some drills and I'll be telling them some things. That, hey, here's what I see you doing because I'm picking it up from what Jeff has told me. And they're like, yeah, OK, yeah. And then we work on things that I want to do and what they want to do. And then Wednesday, I might take a day off or, or hit a little bit on the ball machine, then then start over again. So I'm trying to get in two to three matches a week, along with Jeff's uh, hour and a half. And then uh, like next week, um, I'm in the Oakland uh, tournament, uh, 65s. Next year, I'll be 70 and I'll be the young guy. So here we come. Yeah. <laughs> next year, I'll, and then next yeah, year right. I'll, be, I'll, I'll be the old guy. So yeah, right. the You're never the old guy, bro have to deal with each other you're never the old guy but but so uh next week is the tournament in oakland so i signed up for singles and doubles so there's there's uh you know i'll have that going on so we'll see how that goes but that's pretty much how i work it um i'm, I'm curious too that i know you know you guys have done a lot of work in sort of a relatively short period of time uh call it a year and a half um jeff what do you see with rich in terms of him being able to take what you guys consciously work on and and having him transfer that over to to the match play or yeah to you know a tournament or a league thing where he can kind of turn off the conscious part and trust now this is the big deal is trust right. that the stuff you guys have worked on in the practice arena he doesn't have to consciously manufacture it in a match right and i and i think the you know the the big key to that is rich's willingness to go out in his practice sets and actually do the elements as he talked about, you know, we work on something on a Thursday and there, and, and there's, and, and, and listen, we, it, it's not random stuff either. It's very specific. There's a, there's a common thread through this whole journey. Um, as things clean up, you know, technically in his own ball striking, things clean up in the construction world. And I think constructing a point two was, was like a mind, mind bender for rich for a little while um because his solution was um well if you're under pressure hit it harder more speed right <laughs> right hitting it harder must be a better answer than any other possibility right so um i'm happy to say he's well past that now and he's and and he's well past it because he's willing to go out there in his practice sets and put score aside as much as possible. It's hard to do. We all have egos, you know, we all have pride, but your fastest, your fastest way to improving under in, in match play, how to construct points and doing that is be willing to do the one or two things that your coach has told you to do in practice sets. And you can't care if you lose six. So you have to be totally focused on creating and constructing what the plan was and understanding what success looks like because winning winning you know the set is not the barometer that says i i executed the plan right. it just means right. if it's if it's bob every friday it just means you know how to beat bob you don't know how to construct the point yet right so that's i think for for rich i think you know from my perspective that's been a, a huge advancement and then what it does for me it frees me up to really push push his um kind of whole understanding of the game and the subtleties of of that because that's the next thing as you as you you know as you move up the ladder of success you know and you get better um the 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 details become much more of just an awareness so it's not you're not bogged down with oh I need to mechanically fix my forehand. It's just an awareness of something. Okay, I need to I need to pick this up a little bit. I need to recover a little quicker, and we're no longer mechanically bogged down. We can make adjustments. But I think for for Rich um, and for me as a coach, um, the biggest pleasure in this whole deal is that he's willing and able, and he goes out there and he applies what we've done. And generally speaking, now every saturday or sunday he shoots me a text with a quick little synopsis about what happened on friday and, and so for me it just keeps me in the loop and i understand where we're headed and okay we need to you know make an adjustment here or whatever it might be but i think that's the you know his understanding about what constructing a point and the benefit of doing it does yeah and, you know. and I'll, I'll, if I'll, I'll tack on to that just just last week 
I played a guy that um, I haven't played for a while, uh, a new club, went down to play him. And he's a really good player, but he pretty much, you know, he'll push the ball back and it comes and sits there and says, oh, hit me as hard as you can. And in the first set, that's what I was trying to do. And it was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And it didn't work out so well, right? Right. Second set, I go like, all right, I'm going to take pace off. I'm going to shape the ball. I'm going to feel the ball better. I'm going to back up a little bit on my serve. And the set turned out a lot differently. So I was able to kind of take, you know, I was a little bit lost in the beginning because I hadn't played him for a while. It's a new club. And I wanted to, you know, hey, man, look at me, you know. And <laughs> he was looking at me like, oh, you're just the same old guy, you know. <laughs> <What's changed? laughs> but it was so funny because I even told Jeff this at the second set when I really played uh, a differently game. He said, wow, you really played great that second set. And I don't know if it was great. It was that I changed um, my patterns and I changed how I was playing. Right. And, and that's that's what was crucial. So, so Rich, um, <clears throat> you know, you spent some, you spend a lot of time with Jeff now and you've had, you know, you've had obviously, you know, top shelf coaching from him and you've, you've taken that into playing your league stuff and your tournament stuff. And, um, and, you know, you've, you've had a lot of experiences in, in the short period of time that you've, that you've been with Jeff, right. On, on and yeah. off the court. Right. So yeah. what, what in your mind, when you play these guys, the top guys in your age group, you know, and, and, and let's just say that athletically you guys are all at the same, you know, athletic skill level. Um, maybe they played more tennis than you have. Um, but what would be, what's, what's kind of the one takeaway that you've, that you've kind of gleaned from this time. Um, Cause I'm sure Jeff is, is part of this coaching too, is, is just not working on technique and the X's and O's and that kind of stuff, but kind of the realities of playing competitive stuff that it's not a, it's not a, a one plus one equals two type of formula every time you go out there. But what would be the one takeaway that you've got playing these top guys that you kind of go, man, these guys know something that I don't yet. Yeah. So it's, it's tough to narrow it down to one thing because I mean, how long do we have? <laughs> but, <laughs> well, let's do this. What would be, what would be the number one thing, yeah. the top thing? So, and I touched on it just briefly earlier when I was talking a little bit about my, my, uh, my comeuppance in tennis, but it was really understanding uh, where to be. And um, that gives me clarity because if I'm not in the kind of the kind of the right spot, I then now I'm, I'm all over the place. But it was funny is as Jeff and I progressed and I started playing these matches and taking what we learned onto the court. I was like, the ball's coming right to me. <laughs> Where before. Right. I was scrambling and running and scratching my head. But now, I mean, for the most part, there's a pattern. And I think if, if I can think of the one thing, that was it mostly. I, I have much better positioning. And then I have clarity for the next shot and the next shot. And, yeah, maybe I'm not going to make it because of technique or what have you. But I'm I'm kind of mostly there. And when, I, when I'm not there and I, I realize I wasn't in the right spot and I can – I see that now before, before I couldn't see it. Right. So I think that's probably the that's one good. thing. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's a great takeaway. And I, mean, I, think I mean, not to, I mean, what's the right shot? The, I mean, the, the two dynamics there, number one are shot choice. And number two, where do you want to move to next on the court? Yeah. Based on where your opponent is and based on where you are and the type of shot you played. Right. So, um, I Jeff, think, what let me do you think, I mean, Jeff, I, what, I think, for 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 Rich, where he's at right now, and knowing that he's knocking on the door with some of these quality players that right. when you guys started, maybe not so much. And now he's knocking on the door, pushing them around yeah. a little bit, maybe even taking the set off him. What do you think is his is the next thing that he's got to figure out? Um you know, just to back up a little bit is just, I think, you know, one of the great things now that Rich is in this space where he, he no longer panics and thinks, 
it's a stroke problem. I need to hit my forehand better in order to solve this problem, right? So his explanation there, his match last week, I thought was great. And we went back and forth with texting. And I said, you know, make understand what this guy just said to you. He has no idea why he lost the second set. He just says, you played better. And what I told Rich was, I go, understand this, that players don't always understand what's being done to them. And that, you know, you can come out and play a first set. You might be a little nervous. You might be a little ahead of what's going on. And you lose the first set. It doesn't mean the end of the world. It doesn't mean you're playing poorly necessarily. But hopefully if you're paying attention, as, as Rich is doing such a great job at now these days, is that he's, he's kind of looking at this thing and going, wait a second here. What, this is what I did the first set. I need to back up a little bit on the return of serve, make sure I get more returns in. So he makes a subtle little change there, right? He backs up a couple feet. Not a big deal, sometimes unnoticeable to the, to the server, right? And the next, you know, I'm going to shape some more balls, put an extra ball in play, and not worry about finishing the point. Let him do that. And the next thing you know, he, he wins a set, what was it, 6-2 or something like that, right? I mean, so, so that quality for me is that Rich has moved himself into now being a problem solver. And he, and he knows what tools he has in his tool bag. So he's no longer panicking and going, God, I... I need to get out there and hit, you know, a thousand more forehands. And God, if I, I still just, panic, Jeff. I still panic. Well, we, you know, yeah, but you walk around like you're not, right? So that's, <laughs> that's a big key. Um, so I think that's a, that's a, big, uh, that's a big jump in, in our ability to play that next level of tennis is, to, is we start looking at our opponent no longer at, oh, my God, it's, it's so-and-so. There's just no way. And instead, you start looking at them like a – like a map and you're going, where, where do I attack? How do I get in here and make and disrupt the flow of what this guy likes to do? And how do I, how do I move the ball around into the patterns that I like that let me do what I do best? Right. So all those things together. So, um, circling back, give me the end of that first question. Well, I was uh, just, you know, what do you think's the next thing he's, I mean, what, what you just described is, is really kind of the holy grail of what I think the better players know how to do. I mean, right. you can take the top players in almost any age group, and technique-wise, you can take a guy who's who's losing in the second round, and you can put them side by side in the video. Technique-wise, wow, these guys look pretty darn close. I can't tell you who's the better player, right? But but, but the top guys, as Jeff just described, um, and really maybe that's the answer to my question, which. Jeff, I was saying, well, you know, what do you think is the next thing that Rich has got to figure out? And that is that it's it's a problem solving sport. It's not a right. technique. I mean, there are fundamentals, but it's not a a technique based sport that if if you become the greatest technician out there that you win matches. I mean, the, the reality of that is just completely wrong. And yeah. and and. You know, theory wise, okay, well, here's 17 different volleys you got to have. <laughs> what? Did you know that, Rich? There's 17. I've been keeping well, the secret from you. <laughs> we, are, we only work on 15. What do you mean? <laughs> well, in fact, why don't you drop the 15 and just go with the two and you'll yeah. be okay. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. What else, Jeff? What, I mean, let's, let's kind I, of. Well, you know, okay. We're, so, we're, so then we're we. Almost at half an hour. What do you think would be the next thing? And maybe it's more that he that, that, that he gleans during matches as opposed to your your time in the court what would be the next thing the next step for him to figure out i think well you know again now, now we get into this like um what do you have control over right what what does rich have control over before he ever gets to the court right so we can always be a little more fit Right. And that's going to, you know, we know we have a little knee issue. Right. And that can that can crop up. So if if we lose, you know, five pounds, that takes a little pressure off the knee a little bit. Does that gain us a half a step in recovery? And I know it seems like these little incremental things, but that half a step is massive. And, and that's the deal about, you know, what in 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 teaching rich point construction. And now we're working on another aspect of it, too, about recognizing when a ball lands in a very specific area of the court through the center of the court, can you actually step up in the base inside the baseline and take the ball three feet earlier? 
not on the rise, not blah, blah, blah. I'm just saying taking the ball three feet earlier, right? And so that was kind of a revelatory afternoon we had that day. And it was, um, Rich just went, oh my gosh, wait a second. If I do this, I'm stealing, you know, six feet of flight time off the ball without hitting it harder. And, and this is something we've worked on that's been there for at least a year. We've talked about this. And like I said, we have to get to a certain place before that can actually be executed. Yeah. And so Rich is in that place right now. So I think right now um, another another rung on the ladder for him would will be as he gets more comfortable with really managing the baseline and seeing and recognizing he's been leaving he's been leaving a little money on the table by not stepping up into the court as yeah. often as he can as as is as is possible. I love it. And I think I think that right there will um again it's going to gain him maybe a quarter to half a step of rush time across the net. And I can tell you this that it doesn't sound like much but if that means the ball comes back 5% weaker, 5% less to the place they were hoping to hit it. Um you know, 5% shallower in the court. The reality is is that changes everything. And so I think that that this next concept that we're working on will will move Rich up another rung on the ladder. And I think it's just incremental. These things that we do keeps pushing him up. So, um, you know, by you know by the time we get into the seventies, you know, we're going to be a uh, yeah. stay out of my age group. Dang it! <laughs> um, look, so I would tell you, Jeff, in response to that, that's really valuable. That. Um, you know, it's a way to take that opponent who's not 100% fit. And when you start taking a little time away from that player who maybe doesn't use fitness as their as their priority foundation in their game, now all of a sudden you start to create, I think, some stress over there. Not only immediately in that point, they're realizing, you know, I got to hit a shot here and I got to get back and I'm burning, I'm burning fuel. But I think there's a lot of stress going on between points as well, where they're going, I can't let him step up in the court, as Jeff described, and take that ball three feet earlier. And now what you do is you start to get a few unforced errors, call them forced or unforced errors, because they're trying to go for something out of their comfort zone so right. they don't give you that kind of time-taking-away opportunity. So right. I love that. I think that's – yeah. And, 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 the, and the other part of this that we've been working heavily on too, the last say three to four months too, is, is creating his comfort moving forward into the net. Rich, maybe you get you know, like two seconds on that, you know, cause that, that's a big, that was a big mystery to start with, you know, getting you what? forward. Wait, you um, can actually, you can come forward to the net when you're playing yeah. singles. <laughs> you're um, allowed to cross the service line, yeah, you know, right. the border without yeah, checking no, in. <laughs> pretty much a foreign territory for me, unless I was playing doubles. So, but now I'm, uh, well, I, you know, I didn't know where to go. I mean, I really didn't yeah. know where to go. I was just like a flailing around out there. So, but I have much more clarity now. That's great. Yeah. That's I great. think it's great too that Rich is playing a lot of doubles now too, you know, so he, it forces him to get in there and get his hands busy and start really, you know, kind of feeling like, oh, you, mean you, have, to, you have to pay attention all the time up here. <laughs> yeah, a little closer. Good, good. Yeah. Guys, um, I'm going to cut us off. I'm going to say we're good for today. I uh, appreciate you two getting up at uh, the wee hours here to join us at 7 around 7. So nice in the in the mountain time zone that you yeah. not have to spend Yeah, it. you get that Eight extra hour, right? Yeah. I feel like, yeah. like, you know, I kind of go, yeah, I got another 45 minutes before I got to do anything here. That's just kind of crazy. So, um <laughs> Anyway, guys, appreciate you uh, hanging out today with me. Uh, always good, Jeff, to have you on. Hopefully we'll get into your schedule once a week and do this, uh, whether we interview another student or yeah. bring someone else on or just the two of us. Always fun. Lefty, um, man, you're on the path. And I just, you know, I'm, I'm a little at times jealous that of knowing where you're at with your game and knowing that the hands you're in here with Jeff, I mean, it reminds me when I was – kind of with Mr. Stowe. And I just remember that time just going, this is the greatest time for me because I've totally given myself up to this guy after trying to figure out this stupid sport forever on my own and going kind of nowhere, just kind of, you know, pushing, pushing the big thing up the hill and then just finally going screw it. Um, and then it became just so great 
And even after he passed away, I mean, I just, I now had this body of knowledge that now all I had to do was just go execute on it and knowing that, um, you know, it's, nothing's a quick fix. There's no, like I said before, no one plus one equals two formula for any given situation in the game. Right. And I, I know that, you know, Jeff and I got into it last week with the theory based teaching versus the reality based um, <laughs> reality out there in a match. And um, so anyway, um, I'm really happy for you. And like I said, slightly jealous that you're going through what you're going through now and and knowing that only great stuff's coming down the road that you don't even know what's coming at you. <laughs> I mean, you're going to go out there and play some guy in the age group that, you know, that you just think is, oh, my God, that guy's a God, right? I mean, and, and next thing you know is, is you just lay him to waste three and two and you kind of go, God, I just went from here to there with my belief <laughs> in the game. And it it's it's all good. So. Um, all right, guys, well, listen, thanks for hanging out today. Uh, boys and girls, if you love today's or you got any questions about um, uh, any comments, remarks, com uh, questions, let me know down below in the comments area. You can always shoot, sh you can always shoot me an email, brent at webtennis.com. <clears throat> Jeff is over at Jeff at jacklich365.com. And we know jacklich will be spelled somehow with a, a TCH. Something. Yeah, lich, but it's not. They'll throw, it, throw an extra vowel in there or, you know, whatever. Right, right. And and Abel, of course, is, well, that's why I don't go with Brent Abel, because it's always A-B-L-E. No, come on, man. Um, anyway, Rich, thanks again, man. You guys have a great day. And um, I want you to stay on the broadcast. I'm going to end it here. Guys, thanks for hanging out. Get out there. Help someone else have a great day. We'll do this again tomorrow.